Hey, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about purine metabolism. As you know, your lovely DNA is made of sugar, phosphate, and nitrogenous bases, and these nitrogenous bases are either purines or pyrimidines. With that being said, now let's get started. This is a series on rheumatology. Please watch these videos in order for maximal retention. In the previous video, I've talked about diagnosis of gout. In the next video, we'll talk about management of gout. But before we know how to treat, we should know what's the purine metabolism. Purine metabolism has three different processes. Number one, de novo purine synthesis. Let's make it. Two, purine degradation. Let's break it. And purine salvage. Let's redeem it. Let's recycle it. Let's talk about DNA. Does anyone remember Watson and Crick? The DNA is in your nucleus. So here is your lovely DNA double helix here. Then it wraps around histones to become more condensed. And then it wraps even more to become more condensed. And then the most condensed form is the chromosome. DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, contains sugar plus nitrogenous base plus phosphate. Sugar, it has to be deoxyribose sugar. How about just ribose sugar? This is RNA, not DNA. Because RNA, look at the name. Look at the name. RNA. Ribonucleic acid. So ribo is ribose. But DNA is deoxyribose. So it has to be the deoxyribose. DNA has deoxyribose sugar plus nitrogenous bases plus phosphate. Nitrogenous bases, we have four. Adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. These two together are the purines. Those two together are the pyrimidines. Purines have double ring, but pyrimidine only one single ring. It's like the pyramid. The pyramid has only one base. Nucleoside has no phosphate. When you add the phosphate, it becomes nucleotide. T for phosphate. Purines are adenine and guanine, but pyrimidines are thymine and cytosine. And then A pairs with T and C pairs with G. We call this base pairing of the nitrogenous bases. When you convert the DNA to RNA, this is called transcription. When you convert RNA to proteins, this is called translation. From meaningless codons to meaningful amino acids. Please don't get confused. Do not confuse thiamine, which is a nitrogenous base, with thiamine, which is vitamin B1. One has nothing to do with the other. Absolutely nothing. If you have seen my previous video, Easter in medicine, I've told you that there are only two ways to buy a car. You either buy a new car or a used car. Same thing, if you want to make purine, you either make new purine or you recycle the old purine. This is called the de novo synthesis pathway and this is called the salvage pathway. The purine has been redeemed. And I've told you about the Salvation Army because they salvage stuff. They reuse and recycle stuff. In my video on azithromycin, we have talked about the bacteria, the cell wall, the cell membrane, and how the bacteria makes proteins. We start with PABA, para-aminobenzoic acid, and then dihydrofolate. By an enzyme called dihydrofolate reductase, we have tetrahydrofolate, or THF. And then the THF will help us make purines and pyrimidines in the DNA. Transcription equals RNA. Translation equals proteins. In the bacteria, fungi, and plants, the pathway goes like this. From PABA to dihydrochloric acid to dihydrofolic acid or DHF into THF. This enzyme is very important, called dihydrofolic reductase. And then methylene THF. Methylene THF will help make purines, pyrimidines, and methionine. Purines help in DNA and RNA. Thymidine, only DNA, because... RNA does not have thymidine, it has uracil instead, and methionine to give us Uncle Sam, the famous methyl group donor. Some pharmacology, baby. How do you block this step? You give sulfonamides. So you know the famous drug TMP SMX. The SMX is a sulfonamide, sulfamethoxazole. So that's an antibiotic because it blocks the step, so now the bacteria cannot make DNA or RNA or even methionine. Good. Also, you can give another drug called trimethoprim. This is the TMP in TMP SMX. Trimethoprim works by inhibiting dihydrofolate reductase. Usually, we give trimethoprim with sulfamethoxazole together to achieve something called sequential block, which is blocking two steps in the same flipping pathway. There is another drug called pyrimethamine, blocks the same enzyme, dihydrofolic reductase. Also, the famous anti-cancer, anti-rheumatoid drug, methotrexate, also inhibits dihydrofolic reductase. 
A side effect of all of these medications is folate deficiency and anemia, megaloblastic anemia, which happens to be a macrocytic anemia. The MCV happens to be greater than 100 fem2 liters. If you want to learn more about trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, pyrimethamine, methotrexate, all of the antibacterials, antifungals, antiparasitics, and antivirals, you can check out my antibiotics course available at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Let's review folate. You eat your green leafy vegetables and make your mama happy and then conjugate will help you absorb folate into the bloodstream. In the bloodstream, folate, THF, is bound to methyl group. We hate this methyl group. Let's kick this methyl group away. Kick it. Okay, THF will leave it and kick it into B12. B12, oh, no, it's like a hot potato. I hate it as well. So let me give it to homocysteine. Now, homocysteine plus methyl group equals methionine. And then THF is free. Free to do what? To build up DNA. Great. THF into methylene THF. The more sophisticated term is 5 and 10 methylene THF. Or you can say 5 and 10 dimethyl THF. Then methylene THF becomes dihydrofolate, and here is the famous enzyme, dihydrofolate reductase, which is inhibited by methotrexate or trimethoprim. Cool. While THF was being converted into DHF, DUMP was being converted into DTMP, and the enzyme here is called thymidylate synthase. DUMP into DTMP equals pyrimidine synthesis. Do you remember methylene THF? Yes, the same THF can go into another path. F THF, F me, F for formal. And then formal THF will help you make de novo purine synthesis. And of course, purine is needed for DNA and RNA. All of this was an introduction. Now let's start by talking about de novo purine synthesis. It all starts by ribose 5-phosphate. Where did ribose 5-phosphate come from? From the HMP shunt. Remember the hexose monophosphate shunt, also known as the pentose phosphate shunt? Yes, it produced ribose 5-phosphate. And then ribose 5-phosphate will become PRPP. And then PRPP will become purines or pyrimidines. Whatever floats your boat, whatever builds up your DNA. Ribose 5-phosphate becomes PRPP, and then purines are here, pyrimidines are here. Forget pyrimidines, this is not today's topic. Let's talk about purines. We start with something called IMP, inosine monophosphate. It has one phosphate group. And then it will give you AMP, which is adenine monophosphate, or GMP, which is guanine monophosphate. And these are your nucleotides, because they have phosphate. Ribose 5-phosphate, PRPP, IMP, and this is AMP and GMP. This is the purine de novo synthesis pathway. Now here, the only trick I'll do is that I will put AMP here and GMP here, but do not get it twisted. Both of them are purines. Let's continue the de novo purine synthesis pathway. Ribose 5-phosphate, PRPP, IMP into AMP, and then we have to make it deoxy because DNA is deoxy. Okay, so AMP into ATP. ATP can go directly into RNA synthesis, but this is not deoxy yet. Make it deoxy ATP, and now we're talking about DNA synthesis. Same thing here, GMP guanine monophosphate into GTP guanine triphosphate. Okay, it's good enough for RNA, but it has to become deoxy before it can participate in DNA synthesis. This was the first step in purine metabolism, the de novo purine synthesis. We did successfully build up purine. Now let's break it down. This was the de novo pathway. Now let's talk about degrading the IMP. Let's degrade it. IMP into inosine. This was inosine monophosphate. Remove the monophosphate and it becomes inosine. And then we have hypoxanthine. By an enzyme called xanthine oxidase, it becomes xanthine. It stops being hypo. And then by the same xanthine oxidase becomes uric acid. And then uric acid gets excreted in the urine go to hell purines we have successfully degraded them and decreased them to nothing we're done with building up purines and destroying purines now let's redeem them let's recycle them let's reuse them i was dying but suddenly had a second chance at living it's like an old british movie please give me a second chance sorry about the bad joke 
May I borrow her thoughts and give her thoughts to the purines? Now the purines have a totally different story. I was degraded in uric acid, but suddenly had a second chance at salvation, redemption, at salvage. Salvage into what? IMP, AMP, or GMP? I was about to be degraded in uric acid, but suddenly had another chance. It's called salvage. Any green arrow, it's salvage. So how do you salvage them? Remember this uh, AMP? Yep, became adenosine, and then adenosine was about to become degraded in uric acid, but we saved it, we redeemed it, we recycled it, we salvaged it. Adenine into AMP. The enzyme is APRT. It's called adenosine phosphoriboxyl transferase. Mmm, love it. How about GMP? It was about to become guanosine, and guanosine would become guanine, and guanine was about to be degraded into uric acid, but suddenly had a second chance. From guanine into GMP, what's the name of the enzyme? Hypoxanthine, guanine, phosphoriboxyl transferase. Why hypoxanthine? Because the same freaking enzyme can also help us recycle hypoxanthine, and that's why we call it Hypoxanthine, guanine, phosphoribosyl transferase. I'm having a blast. And then you end up with AMP, IMP, and GMP respectively. AMP can become DTMP, GMP can become DGTP, and IMP can become either one. And this is how you salvage the purines. And instead of just wasting them as uric acid in the urine, which can lead to kidney stones, why just not like, why not just reuse them, recycle them. Thank you so much, APRT and HGPRT, respectively. Now let's add some pharmacology and pathology. So here is the deal. If you want to build up new purines, you go upwards. If you want to degrade the purines, you go downwards. If you want to salvage, you go with the green arrow. Cool! How about the drugs? Let's talk about here. Okay, from PRPP into IMP. 6 mercaptopurine and its friend is a thioprine can help you because actually these are kind of the same things. One is a pro-drug of the other. And we have talked about azathioprine before in my videos on management of rheumatoid arthritis. Ribavirin and mycophenolate mofetil. This is a famous antiviral drug. Yeah, because it has the vir in it. Ribavirin. In for a protein. Vir for viral. Mycophenolate mofetil is a famous chemotherapeutic drug. And they work by inhibiting the conversion of IMP into GMP. Cool! There is a drug here that inhibits adenosine deaminase. What was the function of adenosine deaminase? It's to get the adenosine and deaminase it <laughs> into inosine. There is another disease that does not inhibit but actually has deficiency of adenosine deaminase. What's the name of the disease? Adenosine deaminase deficiency. There is a disease that has deficiency of the famous lovely enzyme called hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. And this is called Lishnion syndrome. Now, when you cannot salvage the purines, what's going to happen to them? They will be degraded. Will that lead to hyperuricemia and maybe gout? You bet. Remember this nice enzyme xanthine oxidase? You can inhibit it by drugs such as allopurinol and febuxostat. I love this name. XO for xanthine oxidase and stat for inhibition. It inhibits xanthine oxidase. Oh, pharmacology is just so hard. Oh, shut up. It's so easy. The name has the answer. What else do you want, Jeffrey? Now, uric acid. How do we stimulate the secretion of uric acid in the urine? You can give a uricosuric drug such as probanosid and high-dose aspirin. How about inhibiting uric acid secretion into the urine? You can use low-dose aspirin. And many students confuse. Which one is like high-dose does what and low-dose aspirin does what? Let me explain it, make it easy for you. But first, you can get my 50 videos on cardiac pharmacology available at medicosisperfectionalis.com. So here's the deal, Jeffrey. You're confused which dose is like pro-gout, which dose is anti-gout. So here is the deal, man. Aspirin, you know, in general. Aspirin, you can give aspirin low dose for grandpa. We call this baby aspirin. Not for babies, it's for grandpa. Don't give aspirin to babies. It can lead to rise syndrome, you stupid idiot. We call it baby aspirin because it's a baby dose. Why does grandpa take baby aspirin? To protect his heart from myocardial infarctions and to protect his brain from strokes. So low dose aspirin is antiplatelet. That's absolutely right. How about high dose aspirin has a completely different function. It's anti-inflammatory. And this is point number one. 
Point number two is that gout is an inflammatory freaking arthritis. From one and two, since aspirin at high dose is anti-inflammatory, and since gout is a freaking inflammatory arthritis, therefore, it's the high dose that's gonna help the gout patient. Oh yeah, that makes sense. How does high dose aspirin helps the gout patient? By excreting the uric acid in the urine and lowering the uric acid in the serum. And that's how you will never confuse the two once you understand it. Because medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Because students get confused and they come up with some woke mnemonics. But the best mnemonic is to understand. If you understood this video, the next one would be a piece of cake. Gout management. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. You can get my cardiac pharmacology course and my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.